The third one um, is saying that um, the outer measure of union k starting from 1 to infinity of ek is less or equal to summation k starting from 1 to infinity of alpha major of the EKs. That's the third properties where EKs are sequence of, of sets. Now, then the last one is translation invariant. The alpha major is translation invariant. That is, the alpha major of a set E plus S is equal to the alpha measure of E. I'm going to prove all these things and uh, we are going to look at we are going to look at how we are going we can uh, how we can prove. So what is left is to prove all these properties. Proof. So the proof, number one is that um, we know that length is non-negative. We know that, so for the first one, to prove the first one, we know that the outer measure of E, if we define the outer measure of E, is equal to the infimum of summation of K starting from 1 to infinity of the length of I K, such that E is inside union of K starting from 1 to infinity of I K, where IK are sequence of open intervals. Where IK are sequence of open intervals. We know that we know that um, we know that length um, length of IK length in general they are always greater than or equal to zero for all K in N. So even if you take the summation Summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k, it will also be greater than or equal to 0. So if you now take the infimum, the infimum of summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k, so that e is inside the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k, and i k are open. Open, open intervals. They will also still be greater than or equal to zero since everything is greater than or equal to zero. So even if you take the infimum, it will still be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, the alpha measure of a set is always greater than or equal to zero. So again, in the proof, the proof is very straightforward. From the property of length, length is non-negative. Length of any set, I started from here, it's always greater than or equal to zero. So if you now take summation, if you now add multiple lengths together, it's always be greater than or equal to zero since you are adding it. Even so, since after adding it, if you take the infimum, since they are always greater than or equal to zero, the smallest of them still will be greater than or equal to zero as well. So if you take the infimum of this, it will still be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, and when you take the infimum of this, that's exactly the definition of the outer measure. So the outer measure is always greater than or equal to zero. Now the second one. Let's prove the second one. To prove the second one, B, to say that now, let A be inside B. We want to prove that the outer measure, let A be inside B. So let B be fully contained in this. We take an open 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 cover. We take an open cover that cover B. Let B be inside union of K starting from 1 to infinity of I K. Or we take a uh, union of open intervals. Union of open intervals that covers B. Be inside um, I K B be inside this. So what does that mean? Since B is inside here, um, it means that since B is inside here, it means that 
since A is side B, and since I the union of K starting from 1 to infinity of I K, that means it means that A2 will be inside the union of K starting from 1 to infinity of I K. The first thing again is let me first define what alpha measure of A is. Um, so uh, when what happens is that if you now take this one, it means that what this means is that summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k such that b such that b is inside the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k um, where k where i k are sequence of open intervals All these ones, this is a set, this is a set. I take the set. So let me tell you what I've done. I've, at, the, at the background, I've defined what the alpha measure is. Let me explain what I'm trying to say. I have defined what the alpha measure is like. What is, since I want to prove that alpha measure of A will be less or equal to alpha measure of B. So I now try to define alpha measure of A or B. Alpha measure of B will be equal to the infimum of the summation of K starting from 1 to infinity of the length of IK such so that B will be inside the union of K starting from 1 to IK um, and IK a sequence of open intervals. So, so that's what I have done. So if that is what I have, I have summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k so that b is inside this, where i k are open intervals. All this is a set. I now put the infimum. I just write this is a set. All this all will be inside, will be a subset of the summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k so that a it's inside the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k, where i k uh, where i k are open or sequence of open intervals. So what this means is that what this means is that um, um, let me let me explain to you. This one is an open cover of B. What an open cover is like? Let me let me let me try to explain. A is inside B, right? That means A is smaller than B. Since A is inside B, A is smaller and B is bigger. So um, if you bring clothes, different clothes, um, uh, different clothes, A will have more clothes because there are some clothes that there are some clothes that will size A that will not size B. So that means there are some clothes or wrapper, wrapper to sleep. There are some small wrapper that will size A, that will fit A, that will cover A, but will not cover B because B is bigger than A or A is smaller than B. So that's what I'm trying to say. So if we have A is inside B, there are some wrapper. All these ones are like wrapper, open cover. They are they are like wrapper, a union of open intervals. So they are made, they are more wrapper for A than for B. They are more upper for A than for B because B A is smaller. So this that is that what I'm talking about. That is set. Like they are more B we have less cover than A because B is bigger than A or bed. There are some bed that we size A because A is small. Is small is small, smaller than B. There are some bed that. All the old bed that can size B, or all the old wrapper that will cover B, will cover it because A is smaller than B. Because all the old wrapper that will cover B, will cover it. That's everything this B has, A has it. But there are some wrapper that will cover A, but we will not be able to cover B. Because B is A is smaller than B, or B is bigger than A. So by so doing, that means A already have more cover than B. So that's why the set, when B, B is inside an open cover, so that's why they said this one is inside, at least it's smaller, it's inside 
A. So everything is the same, only that B is inside the union of K starting from 1 to infinity of I K. And in this case, I have A is inside you, K starting from 1 to infinity of I K. That's just the difference. And the difference is because of what I have explained here. You will not take the infimum of both sides. Taking the infimum of both sides. So if you take the infimum of both sides, if you put infimum here, you have actually defined or you can exactly define the outer measure of B. And if you put infimum in front here, you also define the outer measure of A. So, but there is a property of infimum, I will show you now. If you take infimum of both sides, if you put infimum here, you have infimum. So when you put infimum, you have infimum of all these things, which is actually, so we have outer measure of B. But when you take infimum, you know this is a subset, it will swap. It will, since I have taken infimum on both sides, when I put infimum here, I put infimum here, this thing will swap to this. But since I have taken infimum, infimum has value. Instead of swapping to this, it will change to greater than or equal to, since it's now greater. When you take infimum, it's one of the property of infimum. One of the property of infimum is that if A is inside B, then infimum of A will be greater than or equal to infimum of B. That's one property of infimum. So if I put infimum here, infimum of all this one, that's outer measure of B. But instead of to be inside, it will now swap. But when it swap, uh, since I'm not dealing with set again, I'm talking about a value, a, a scalar now, it will be written as greater than or equal to this one. Infimum of all this one is actually outer measure of A. So by so doing, I can write and write, I can write it to write uh, alpha measure of A is less or equal to alpha measure of B. And we have proved the second, uh, the second, the second uh, definition. We have, uh, we have proved the second properties, the second property of the alpha measure. Now to prove the third one, to prove the third one, that's uh, for the case of monotonicity. So this third one is called countable. Countable subadditivity. Countable subadditivity. And why this one is a uh, translation invariant. Translation invariance. The third one is called countable subadditivity. The fourth one is called translation invariant. Now, to prove C, to prove the third property, that is the outer measure of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of ek, uh, it will be less or equal to summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of each of the ek. So now, proof. Don't forget um, the outer measure is non-negative. Now, suppose, suppose there exists k naught such that suppose there exists k naught in n such that the outer measure of e k naught is equal to infinity. Suppose one of the outer measure is equal to infinity. Is equal to infinity. Then we don't have anything to prove. Since uh, we don't have anything to prove, since um, that means what we are going to have here is that so since it is one of them, this one means suppose there is this k not in here, so that this k not means it is one of all these ones. If one of them is equal to infinity and they are not negative, see what we have from summation of k. Starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of EK, obviously they will be greater than, they will be greater than or equal to the uh, outer measure of EK naught. Since since EK naught is one of them, since EK naught is just one, and you have plenty of this, so many of this starting from one means that outer measure of E1 plus outer measure of E2 plus outer measure of E3. So you get to outer measure of ek naught, and it still goes on like that. So obviously, it will be greater than or equal to this one. 
So since it's greater than or equal to this one, and this one is equal to infinity. So obviously, uh, infinity is greater than anything. Infinity is greater than anything. So that means that uh, this one will be less. That means that this one will be less. This, that means that if one of them is equal to infinity is a finite measure, that means this one will be less, will be greater than this. Or uh, so therefore. Greater than or equal to the outer measure of the union. In your case, starting from one of infinity of. So that it will be greater because this already shows that it's greater than or equal to infinity. You cannot have any number greater than infinity, so it's so that means no matter the value of this outer measure, no matter the value, it will still be great. This one will be greater than or equal, or worse, they will be equal. So now, case two. The case two we now suppose suppose for all k suppose for all k the alpha measure is is of finite value suppose for all k and the alpha measure is of finite value that means the alpha measure is always less than infinity what will happen what will happen is that uh, since I have this the first thing is I will let I will let, so that I will not complicate matters, I will let e to be equal to the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k. So that means I want to prove that, in essence, that means I want to prove that the outer measure of e is less than or equal to the function of k starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of e k. That's what I want to prove now. So that means that's what I want to prove. So now, since I have written this, the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is that, the first thing I'm going to do is that, I am going to define what this is. What is the outer measure of EK? The outer measure of EK is given as the infimum. Outer measure of EK is given as the infimum of what? Summation of, let me use N now, N starting from 1 to infinity of the length of IKN for, 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 for single purpose or for, for the notion. For the notice so that e k is inside uh, for notation purpose for notation case so that e k is inside the union of k starting from one to infinity of i k this one will be n rather n starting from one to infinity of i k n we i k n a sequence of open intervals a sequence of open interval now don't forget infimum by the, from the definition of infimum now note note when we from the definition of infimum if you have a set a if s is the infimum of a set a what does that mean the first thing is that uh, for every element in that set, s will be less or equal to it to y. That's definition one of infimum. Then the epsilon definition would be for every epsilon greater than zero, there will be another, there will be y in a such that what? There will be y in a such that if you add epsilon to that infimum, it will no longer be the smallest, it will be greater. Now, so this is from the definition of infimum. So what does this mean? If S is the infimum of a set A, for instance, infimum, the definition of, an, of infimum, number one is that, that means infimum is the smallest, it's the smallest element in the set, the smallest element, or the smallest value 
if it belongs to the set, it's called minimum. If it does not belong to the set, you say call it a minimum. So for every y in a, that is every element in a, s is the smallest. That is s is less or equal to y. That is the that is number one definition. Then the epsilon definition of infimum is that for every epsilon greater than zero, you know s is this infimum or the smallest in quote. Since s is the smallest, epsilon is any positive small number, any positive number. If you add epsilon to this s, it will no longer become the smallest. You can see that is there will be another element in a. There is this y in a so that. S, you know, S is the smallest before since it's the infimum. Plus, if you add a small number, once you add a number to it, once you add epsilon, it's no longer the, be the smallest. It should now be greater than at least one element in Y in A. That's the definition. That is, for all epsilon greater than zero, there will exist Y in A so that S plus epsilon will be greater than Y. So in this case, this uh, this outer measure of EK is like my X. Is equal to infimum of a. This a is the set I'm talking about. All these things inside the bracket is like is a set. And if I want to relate it to what I've given here, that means a is all this set, and this is the infimum. S is this one. So I want to use this uh, this second definition. I will now say from what I have, I will now say let epsilon be greater than zero. What does that mean? There will exist. For all let us see, let us not be that as a, there will exist y in a. The set of a of this set are written this way. That means there will exist summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i, k, n. There will exist this one, this thing. This, are the, this is how we write the set here. There will exist this so that s plus s plus that is this one. The outer measure of EK plus epsilon, but I'll write my epsilon to be epsilon over 2 raised to power n will be greater than y. What is y? Y is the element I have, I have, I'm talking about here. Summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k comma n. So what I'll do from there is that I will rewrite it. I want to rewrite like this summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k n will be less than the outer measure of e k plus epsilon over 2 raised to the power n. What I'm going to do next is that what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do next now is that um, I'm going to have I will um, from here from here we know that e k we know that e k is this we know that e k e k is inside from here we know that e k is inside the union of n starting from one to infinity union of n starting from 1 to infinity of i k n you know of n starting from 1 to infinity of i k n um i want to i want to write e so i'll take union again union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k so taking union of both sides union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k that will be inside since i've taken union yeah i'll take another union here yeah, union of k starting from 1 to infinity but this one is here before union of n starting from 1 to infinity of i k n so what this one will be is that i will not take the outer measure of both sides if i take the outer measure outer measure of this one or this one is e union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k is e so the outer measure of e will be less or equal to don't forget by monotonicity when uh, when this is like A and this is like B, A is inside B means that outer measure of A will be less or equal to outer measure of B. So length of E will be less or equal to the outer measure of um, the outer measure of. I don't want to take outer measure. I want to take length. Now, length, 
length of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of ek will be less or equal to length of union of k starting from 1 to infinity union of n starting from 1 to infinity of i k n that's what i'm going to have so i'm going to have length of union of k starting from 1 to infinity of ek why this one will be less or equal to why this one will be less or equal to so this one will come out to be summation this one will, when the first union come out Summation of k starting from 1 to infinity. The second one, summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i, k, n. So, um, I call this one. I call this one. Now, from here, oh no, let me call this one. And let me call this two. Let us call this two. So, from one. from 1 so uh, I want to change a notation I want this one to be k to be raised to the power of k well k is still, is still any, any natural number so from 1 I have summation of k n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k n of length of i k n less than the outer measure of e k plus epsilon over 2 raised to the power k so i'll take length i'll take summation i'll take summation of both sides summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of both sides so i have summation of k starting from 1 to infinity i'll have again summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k comma n less than i also take summation here summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of uh, after measure of e k as well summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of epsilon over 2 k 2 raised to power k so that i will have um, so that I will have so this one will now be summation of k starting from 1 to infinity summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k n to be less, this one will now be less than summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of e k plus by the time you take the summation of all this one, 1 over 2 raised to the power k to infinity, the answer will be 1, so you'll be left with epsilon here. So I think I'll need to take the outer measure here, not length. It will eventually become length, outer measure instead. So, outer measure. The reason is because why this one can easily come to summation is because I have intervals. Outer measure of intervals. Outer measure of an interval is the same thing as the length. So, this is the outer measure of union of union of intervals. So it's exactly the same as the outer, outer measure of union of union of interval is equal to the length of the interval. So since the outer measure is equal to the length, so all these ones can come out with as a length. So I will have this. So now from 2, from 2, let me call this 3. From 2 and 3. 2 says that the outer measure of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k of e k is less or equal to all this summation of k starting from 1 to infinity summation of n starting from 1 to infinity which is also in 3 like that of the length of i k n in 3 summation of k starting from 1 to infinity summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k n so instead of writing this i just come here which is this 
I will just write, or let me write so that you can understand summation of k starting from 1 to infinity, summation of n starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i, k, n. It, so I've written this, which is exactly this here, is less than, let me write less than here, it's less than the summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of e, k plus epsilon. So that means that the outer measure of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k will be less than the summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the outer measure of e k plus epsilon. What is left is that we take the infimum of both sides. Or obviously, uh, taking the infimum of both sides, or by the time you remove epsilon, if you remove epsilon, if you remove epsilon, what does that mean? Taking the infimum or removing epsilon, it means that the alpha measure of the union of k starting from 1 to infinity of e k will be less or equal. Since I remove epsilon, epsilon is one of them, this one will be less or equal to summation of k starting plus 1 to infinity of alpha measure of e k. And uh, that gives us the proof of the countable subadditivity. That is the proof of the countable subadditivity. So um, we are left with um, one more. That is translation invariant. Let me quickly prove um, the one for translation invariant. To prove for translation invariant. Um, the fourth one, that the outer measure of E plus S naught is equal to the outer measure of E. You want to prove, you want to do two things here now. To prove this, to prove this, what we are going to do is that we know that net E be covered by this open set. Union of open interval. Let E be inside any of K starting from 1 to infinity. So what will happen? What will happen here is that E plus S naught, or E plus S or S naught, um, let S naught be coming from, let S naught be coming from the set of real numbers. So now what will be E plus S naught We also be inside, E plus S naught will be inside union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k plus s naught. That's what we are going to have. So you, this is an interval. This is an interval. So you now take the outer measure. Outer measure of e plus s naught will be less or equal to the. Uh, will be less or equal to. If you take, let me write it. Outer measure of union of k starting from 1 to infinity of i k plus s naught that's what we are going to have so this outer measure of e plus s naught will be less or equal to by the time this one will come out it becomes summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of the length of i k plus s naught so this one will come, since this is an interval, it will become length, length of i k plus s naught. So that at the end of the day, so that at the end of the day, this is length. So I have told you before from the property of this one, when this union comes out, it becomes summation of k starting from 1 to infinity of outer measure of this. But this is length, the outer measure of an interval. This is an interval rather. It's also the same thing as the length. The outer measure of an interval is length, length of the interval. So length of i k plus s naught. So that's why I write I, I have written length of i k plus n of s naught. But length is translation invariant. Since length is translation invariant, since length is translation invariant, it means that this one can be written summation of one to infinity of the length. I've told you length of i k plus x naught is also the same thing as length of i k. So taking the infimum, taking the infimum on both sides,
taking the infimum of both sides, what happens is that I have the outer measure of E plus S naught will be less or equal to this one will be at the outer measure of E. Since uh, since E is just union of IK. Because if E is inside the union of IK, let me tell you what has happened here. Let me tell you what has happened here. What has happened here is that since E is inside the union of IK, if you want to define the outer measure of E, outer measure of E will be equal to the infimum of summation of both length of IK, isn't it? So that E is inside the union of I and K starting from 1 to infinity of IK. That was to be where I care a sequence of open. So that's why that's why so since I have summation here, summation of k starting from one of the length of I k, this is it. This is it here. And I'm not taking taking the infimum of both and I'm taking the infimum. The infimum is not in front, so that means it becomes the outer measure of E. That's why this one becomes outer measure of E. If you take the infimum of this one, this one already has infimum, it's still the same thing as this. So I don't need to be all these ones I've been written on top before now. That's why it becomes this. And this is one. It's need to prove that it is greater now. We have proved that. We have proved. We have proved. We have proved that. We have proved this. We have proved one now to prove the second one. This I have proved that the outer measure of E plus S not is less than or equal to outer measure of E. It now remains to prove that um, it's greater than or equal. It remains to prove that it's greater than or equal. Now, from one, from one, from one, uh, from what I have given, from what I have given, from one, from one, what does that mean? The outer measure from one, it means that the outer measure of F plus S naught, we also, the outer measure of, mm -mm, I don't want to write F. The outer measure of E, or let me, the outer measure of E plus S naught minus S. From what we are giving minus S naught, rather. If I call this F, the outer measure of E plus, let me, okay, I know what I'm going to write so I can get it. From one, the upper measure of f plus minus s naught. From one, we also be less or equal to the outer measure of just f. Why? Because this is a scalar. It's translation invariant. I prove that outer measure of a set e plus a scalar will be less or equal to outer measure of just the set. So here, yeah, I put, I introduce another set f. I will still say what f will be. Outer measure of a set F plus minus S no is still scalar. So it will also be less or equal to outer measure of just F. Now let a F let F be equal to E plus S naught. Replace F with E plus S naught. It means that the outer measure of this one will now be E plus S naught minus S naught will be less or equal to the outer measure of E plus S naught. S naught minus S naught will be zero. So I have outer measure of E. If less or equal to alpha measure of E plus S naught. So let me call this 3. So obviously, you can, uh, let me call it 2. Obviously, you can see from 1 and 2, what, what can you say? From 1 and 2, I've shown that E plus S, alpha measure of E plus S naught is less or equal to alpha measure of E. And I've also shown that outer measure of E is less or equal to outer measure of E plus S naught. That means they are the same. It means that outer measure of E plus S naught is actually equal to the outer measure of E. So, and that's all. So we are done with the, uh, we have proved the four properties of the Lebesgue outer measure. And that will be the end of today's class. Uh, by next class, we will be going into measure itself, the back measure. Help us like, subscribe, and uh, if you have any comments to give, you can also give your comments in the box below. My name is Adedo Ijeimaya, President Max. Thank you very much.